Hey, what's up, man? Um, just have to apologize for not getting back to you any sooner with this whole coronavirus thing going on, the family life. It's just been hectic at home. Um, and I apologize for missing your message. So um, anyway, for this example, I'm gonna show you is I've got my A station. You can't see it, but I've got like a ton of modules underneath my desk. Okay, so for this example, I'm using a an Apollo Twin as my sound card. I've got an A station sound module. I'm using a MIDI Sport uh, MIDI interface um, to connect my my sound module to my computer via USB. So, okay, this is how you do it. Make sure you're on um, on A sound, yeah, any sound, one to sixteen doesn't matter. And you go from plugin to I think this is connections. I think that's what they call it. I might be wrong. But in this um, section here, you want to go to output. Yeah. And then in your output, you want to select your MIDI to wherever your um, Juno um, or wherever your um, whatever keyboard or sound module you're using, wherever it is um, in the MIDI realm, then um, you click that. So for me, it's um, port A. I've left the channel to one um, and obviously yeah, make sure that you've selected MIDI beforehand. If I press uh, one of the keys, okay and basically I've got um, an Apollo 10 like I just said earlier and so um, for me I've got my A station is coming through here. That's how we can hear the sound, okay? Right. I don't know if your sound card has a, um, I don't know if your sound card has a, uh, like a virtual mixer, but the Apollo Twin does. Um, and so I'm able to connect all my, my external gear through, uh, so I'm using two sound cards. I'm using, well, it's a sound card, but I'm not using it as a sound card. I'm merely using it as a digital, to, or analog to digital um, converter. So I'm using a Moto 2408. It's not connected to the computer as such, it's connected to um, the Apollo Twin via a light pipe. And then um, obviously the Apollo Twin is connected to my Mac via a, um, a lightning connector. And so, or Thunderbolt connector, sorry, Thunderbolt connector. So I can hear my sounds through console and now all I have to do is record a pass so I'm going to record something now okay okay so right so we've got that recorded Okay, now we need to dump the, we need to convert the MIDI notes here. Um, we need to dump them to audio. So this is how you do it. Okay, so you go to sampler and then set the pad that you want to record to. For me, it's sound three. And then um, my A station, I believe is on, let's just see, rename. I can't rename, yeah, it's on A, that one and two, um, which is one of the, one of the uh, two, one of the two channels one of the stereo peers that's coming from the, the the light pipe from the Motu into the Apollo Twin. Um, and so down here, I need to select um, the external stereo source, and the input is going to be it's going to be either one, either one or two. Let's just play. Let's play here. Okay, so now we know that it's on um, channel two. Um, and then I usually set the bar to wherever that is, uh, bar four, four bars, sorry. Um, don't need to set the monitor. Um, you can have sync, detect, or loop. I think I normally leave it on, sorry, I normally leave it on synced. Um, so hit play on the sampler and then hit play on the um, transport bar. 
and then you'll see it recording. Um, and then usually once I um, I've recorded that pass, I can name it here. Uh, synth uh, string or something, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. You can also name it here as well. The, the naming it on the pad is just for reference. If you name it here though, um, if you've got to go into edit, I think. Do you have to go and edit? Yeah, you don't have to go into edit. You can, um, if you record it here, let's select it all. Um, then it allows you to identify it, synth pad, let's call it, um, in your finder, on your computer, so wherever it's recorded on your computer. So, so I believe if you go to edit um, and then you can right click. Okay, firstly, normalize. So normalize um, your pass like that. So it's got a nice big fat wave form here. And then if you want to uh, locate this file, then you can um, right click and then hit find in finder. Um, and then there it is, it's highlighted. Simple. So that's handy to know. So yeah, you should always uh, make it good practice to, to rename um, your recordings because obviously if you start doing this over a period of time, you're gonna have like, you know, just random files and keep the uh, computer with random names. Um, so you don't really want that. Okay, so now that we've recorded our sample or done our audio dump or audio pass, whatever you wanna call it, just go ahead and mute your MIDI pattern here. And then now on the uh, synth string where you recorded the sample, you can just hit the pencil and then uh, drag out uh, to four bars in the pattern because it's a four bar loop. And then um, also, um, now it really depends. See. We're going to take the perfili, perf, blah, 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 tongue -tied. polyphony down to one. You can either have it on AD, ADSR. So basically, when I hit the when I hit play, because I've drawn the note out to the very end. You probably know this, but I'm just explaining it anyway. Because I've drawn the the note out to the very, the note to the very end, it should just play to the very end. Okay, um, and then obviously if you just have it on one shot, then you don't need to. You can just have it like that. You don't need to drag out the whole, the whole, uh, the whole note. So you hit play, same thing. And to hide them, um, if you notice, because there's a little bit of a. Um, like latency you can um you can add like an effect so what i normally do is i'll um because it has reverb on the synth pad already i'll just add a reverb to it see and it kind of masks that that little gap i think all the way up is better See, it's not as bad then. Let's see if I go really up. If I make it really wet. If I make it really wet, go to like 80%. Yeah, see, so that's just a little tip I've given you there. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And so, so every pass you would you would do the same thing so um let's just stop that uh, um so every pass you do the same thing so i can just name this uh midi one let's just say um and then this one would be like midi uh two and then so obviously now i'm gonna go to 
Is it on? Yes, it is. Uh, you want it on one. Destination, you want it to port A. Um, and then I can obviously change the sound, so. Okay, so once you've recorded that pass, then we just do the same thing again. Um, so I would select um, sound, um, the next pad up, sound five, and then we just call it uh, sim stab. Let's just call it sim stab. Uh, go to sampler. We've already um, selected the sound source, and it's on input uh, one and two, or input two. Uh, so here. Um, Let's put it on loop and see what happens. Take target. No, let's just leave it. Okay, sync, start, and then hit start on the um, transport. So then we normalize. Uh, firstly, just name it. So we're going to name it Simp. Um, go to edit, normalize, sorry, normalize, which is here. Is it? Uh, so, no, it's there, normalize. Um, and then we can come out of sampler and then uh, mute second MIDI take. Uh, so we just got to write it in. So we're going to write it in. We can go from keyboard to um, pad mode um, and then just drop it here. Uh, no, that's wrong because it should be on ADCR. ADSR. So again, just go over to the very end. Uh, make sure if any is down to one so the notes don't repeat, repeat themselves. You probably know that anyway. It's on ADSR, so that's cool. Okay, hit play. So yeah, it's a bit of a ball ache. Um, obviously, it, it would it, it would be um, a benefit to you if you record and note down all of your patches from your Juno, so that if you do need to go back um, and replay the notes. MIDI notes, then at least you could bring up the same patch on your Juno. I don't know how Juno's work. I don't know if they, you are able to save the patches directly on the on the device. Um, for me, with this A station, there's no way of. Well, actually, you can save. I think you can save your own patches on here. So I'd have to just make note of the patch number. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it, man. Again, sorry for the delay, but um, um, yeah, you know how it is. It's just crazy times at the moment, and. Uh, um, just you know, the home life is hectic. We've got small kids and all the rest of it, and so homeschooling them and then just you know, entertaining them every day has just been a ball ache. <laughs> anyway, I wish you all the best. Um, if you've got any questions, any doubts, just hit me up. Um, and yeah, man, stay safe. Speak soon. If you want tips and tricks on Machine and the Machine Micro and Machine Studio Controller, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Again, thank you for the support, thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.